I understand from other teachings that I've heard about Islam that most of the Islam people would agree with certain things in the Bible that they would agree with what is in the Quran. Is that correct? Okay. In the Christian teaching, it says that Jesus, according to the Gospels, as, as you've already talked about, did in fact die on the cross and was the payment for all of our sins, which through him is the way for us to be able to have his righteousness and therefore be perfect in God's sight. I was curious as to the view in the Quran as to the crucifixion, if indeed it did or did not happen. With regards to the crucifixion, the Quran is very explicit. Very explicit. It says, وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ That they said in boast that we kill Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God. In answer to that, God says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ That they didn't kill him and they didn't crucify him. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ But it was made to appear to them so. وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَقْتٍ مِّنْهُمْ And those who stood therein are full of doubts. مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمِ They have no certain knowledge. إِلَّا تِبَا زَنْ They only follow conjecture, guesswork. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا For a surety, they killed him not. That's the Muslim position. We say, آمَنَّا صَدَّقْنَا We hear and we affirm. But now, my sister says, look, we have a record. The Christian says, we have a written record. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, these 27 books of the New Testament. And we have hundreds of prophecies fulfilling this event. My response is, I said, look, my brothers and sisters, you are reading this book, the Bible, in your own mother tongue. And I'm claiming that you are understanding the exact opposite of what you're reading. Not just misunderstanding. We can have a lot of misunderstanding, but exact opposite. If you read in the Bible, for example, that thou shalt not commit adultery, you are understanding that thou shalt commit adultery. So how can we be such zombies? What do you take us for? You know, we are the people who live on the moon. You know, we got the whole world in, a, in the palm of our hand. You have. The Bay of Bengal tragedy. See, America warned Pakistan. They said, look, the tidal waves are coming. Be on guard. They didn't hit the warning, the fools. My people, they didn't hit the warning. And Hundreds of thousands more people died. They warned the Jews in 1973 that the Arabs are on the move. They didn't heed the warning. So we know the Arabs. Every time they want to do anything, they make a big noise beforehand. So when we will do this and we'll do that, and by then they said, we'll give it to them. So they didn't heed the warning. First time the Arabs caught the Jews off guard. They broke the barley line. First time they took the initiative because they didn't heed the American warning. You got the whole world in the palm of your hand. And yet this same nation He's reading the book in his own mother tongue and he's understanding the exact opposite of what you're reading. This is not just a charge, an allegation. I prove it to you in two minutes. I said, you know, Jesus returned to that upper room after his alleged crucifixion where they had the Last Supper. Those of you who know your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. He goes in and he wishes his disciples in the Hebrew language, Shalom Aleichum, which means same as Salam Aleichum in Arabic, peace be unto you. And when he said, peace be unto you, his disciples were terrified. So I'm asking, why were they terrified? Because when you meet your long-lost master, your uncle, your grandfather, the Arab and the Jew, we embrace one another, we kiss one another. I felt very funny the first time the Arabs did it to me. But I'm getting used to it now. You see, I said, that's what the Jews did 2,000 years ago, and the Arabs did 2,000 years ago. Instead of doing that, they're terrified. I said, why were they terrified? So the man knows his Bible. He said, look, Luke chapter 24, verse 36, he tells us that they were affrighted because they thought he was a spirit. Is that the answer? Yes, that's what the Bible says. Luke said, they thought he was a spirit. So I said, did he look like a spirit? And by now, for 40 years I'm talking, not one Christian has ever told me yes. If he did, if you do, I said, what does a spirit look like? If he said he looked like a spirit, I said, what does a spirit look like? Tell me now. No. Everybody says no. He didn't. So I said, why should they think the man is a spirit when he didn't look like one? Puzzled. Puzzled. So I said, you see, the reason is that the disciples of Jesus, they had heard from hearsay people talking that the master was hanged on the cross. They had heard from hearsay people were talking that he had given up the ghost. In other words, spirit had come out, he had died. They had heard from hearsay that now he's dead and buried for three days. 
all the knowledge was from hearsay, people talking. Because they were not eyewitnesses or your witnesses to the happening. Because Mark chapter 14, verse 50, he tells us that at the most critical juncture in the life of Jesus, all his disciples forsook him and fled. All. I said, does all mean all in your language, you English man? He said, yes. That they were not there. All the knowledge was from hearsay. On hearsay knowledge, if you heard about a man, your master, who's dead and buried for three days, you expect him to be stinking in his grave. Such a person, when you see, naturally you're terrified. You think he's a ghost, a spook, spirit. So Jesus wants to assure them that they're not what they're thinking. So he says, Unzuru ila yadayya wa He says, behold my hands and my feet. Inni ana huwa, that it is I myself, who suni wanzuru, say, handle me and see. For a spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. Handle me and see. A spirit, a spirit has no flesh and bones. A spirit, I mean any, is an indefinite article. In your language, any spirit. And this is an axiomatic truth. You don't have to prove it to the atheist, the agnostic, the Hindu, the Jew, the Muslim. Universally, we say a spirit has no flesh and bones. If you get, got flesh and bones, you're not a spirit. No convincing required. Why does he go out of his way to tell them so? Because they're thinking that he is. So he said, the spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. And they felt him. And they believed not for joy, meaning that they were overjoyed and wondered, what happened, man? We thought the man was dead and buried. To assure them further that they are wrong in their understanding, he said, Aindakum hahuna ta'am. Have you got here anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb and he took it and he ate in the very sight to prove what? That is a ghost, that is spook, his spirit, he's resurrected. No. And the same fellow man, damn fools, what are you afraid of me for? Handle me and see. And look at the post crucifixion events. He is ever in disguise, ever in disguise. His own disciples can't recognize him on the way to Emmaus. Ever in disguise, he never went to the temple of Jerusalem. He never went and showed them, said, look, here I am. He gave a sign to the Jews, the sign of Jonah, that I will be like Jonah, and I'm reasoning with the people. What was the sign of Jonah? Look, it's another topic. I dealt with it last night with Professor Douglas. Get the videotape, and I deal with this more extensively. Or get this book absolutely free, Crucifixion or Crucifixion. Sounds the same, but it is not. Have a look. Crucifixion, the first fiction is F-I-X-I-O-N. To fix up a person on the cross and kill him. That's crucifixion. The second is cruci, F-I-C-T-I-O-N, fiction. Means a fairy tale. And the Quran says, illa tiba zan, the only following conjecture, guesswork, fiction. And I prove it to you from the Bible. I give you 30 different reasons from the Bible that Jesus Christ was neither killed nor crucified. You must be big enough. Men enough to read it, women enough to read it, and then come back to me. And I tell you in your own language, as if somebody has made zombies out of you. You read something, and you're understanding something else. You read there again and again. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. It says, and he gave many convincing proofs, Jesus, many convincing proofs that he was alive. A-L-I-V-E, alive. That's the word there. He was alive. Mary Magdalene. After her experience with Jesus, she returns and tells the others that he is alive, A-L-I-V, alive, and they believe not. The two from Emmaus return to that upper room, telling the others that he is alive, and they believe not. These eight or ten, telling Thomas he wasn't there at the first meeting, he said, look, Jesus is alive, and he believed not. By God, I don't know what you're reading. In English, a-L-I-V, alive, A-L-I-V, alive, not resurrect, not resurrected, not res alive, 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 alive. And you say resurrected, resurrected, resurrected. You concoct a word which is not there, and then you thumb suck it. And then you want the whole world to thumb suck it as well. I say, there's something wrong. Somebody has made zombies out of you in your own mother tongue. Come, talk to me. Bring your, 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 your Jerry Falwells and your Pat Robertsons. And uh, who else is there? Billy Graham. And... Of Jimmy Swaggart. Bring them, arrange four meetings in the United States on topics like, is the Bible God's word? Was Christ crucified? Is Jesus God? And I am prepared to pay any one of these $10,000 per performance, just one hour. In Madison Square Garden, I give you $10,000. And I will organize the meeting. 
we need four meetings like that in the United States. Let the country know, these 240 million people, that look, you are being led by the nose by somebody, and that somebody is not God.